Okay, so Mr. Gillen, your last motion we had for today. I have uh, like oh, sure. 60 seconds. For sure, have at it. <clears throat> the state did not and cannot answer the direct question about uh, a violation of the safe harbor rule, why that would allow uh, that uh, situation to give the governor or the Secretary of State any authority to do anything. That uh, is, it comes in under several of the arguments that we've made. I won't repeat it, but they uh, simply, their argument is, let's put an agent up and ask the agent whether or not he had authority. No. By law, by federal law, they did not have the authority. It's not whether some GBI agent thinks that he can come in here and tell the jury, pay no attention to federal law, pay no attention uh, to, to the dissenting opinion in Bush v. Gore, pay no attention to that, I'm a GBI agent, I say we can do it. That's wrong. Uh, they lose there because the law is very, very, very clear. And, uh, and we can go back and uh, we'll both the, the state and I know the Schaefer team will go back to look at our argument that we made to the court when my recollection could be wrong, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so, we'll see. But my recollection was because the pleading was a part of the court system that we had a, a citation which permitted the court to take that into consideration as part of the record and thus not going outside of the record for speaking to Murr. I could be wrong. But we'll we'll get that uh, to you uh, quickly because uh, that you know, the, you know and, and they they latch onto that to say pay no attention to the reality of what happened in this courthouse in this court in the court filings which destroys their argument and so with that your honor I'll sit down and then we'll I'll go back and get my other folder. So, on your last motion here, I, um, kind of as we were with the First Amendment issue, I think we need to figure out where we are procedurally. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> federally, it sounds like, you know, this would be a pretty common motion. It would be a surplusage motion. Georgia, it's not quite as clear for us. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we're, let's start with just the authority to kind of take a scaffold to an indictment and cut out things we don't like well I, I mean your honor the you know we we talk about there are two two components to this motion one there's the strike surplusage and then there's a dismissal that we asked for which is kind of also a component of the other now uh, you know we cite the uh, state fee uh, Corin uh, on the issue of being able to uh, you know, the, the, the allegation, the indictment is not wholly unnecessary to constitute an offense as mere su surplusage. We, th we think... Right. Well, we th but when we read the surplusage opinions, we're talking about, you know, a miscited code section or um, a wrong date or something like that. So I, I, I don't know. I don't think that's what you're correct. No, no. I, I guess this is where I'm It's more coming. just a legal conclusion, right? Yeah, let me... Yeah, legal con con a legal conclusion, number one... But it's even more than that. It's, it's this. Uh, when, when they continually, in their pleadings, in the indictment, in their pleadings, in their, in their uh, ex, uh, extrajudicial comments that they make, they have bombarded uh, the defendants, the electors in this case, with the concept of and the phrase of fake electors. Now, that, that is not... Uh, you know that that is a description, a conclusion, and a and a pejorative description. Sure. So it's a legal conclusion. You very much disagree with it's the core of your defense. Uh, I well, I, I I think it's not only a legal uh, I I conclusion, but it's also something that be, should be stricken because it is a just a pejorative statement. I'm not saying okay. I'm saying. You know, uh, I, can, I can call you something really nasty in an indictment, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a legal conclusion about your violation of, of a particular law. And so that's what we have here. And we, and we have this permeating this case. Well, I'm just trying to, again, 
based on what we've seen and is allowable in Georgia, uh, let's just make it simpler. If, if, if in a murder indictment someone's alleged to have acted with malice aforethought, that's a legal conclusion. Well, that's right. And it's someone that the defendant may really have an issue with. But we don't strike it. We just go forward and we go to trial. Different world, different cases, not the point that I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is, uh, you know, and you put in malice of forethought because you, you put that in there to it's define the element, terms. Sure. What, what about this one? There's one I remember when we talk about nicknames and aliases. And I remember there's one in Georgia from the 90s. They put in an alias of Stomper. And he had beat the <laughs> defendant to death. Well, And the Supreme Court said, that's okay. You know why? Because they probably proved that there was an alias of that guy called Stomper. That's different than the... That trial. The state's saying we're going to prove that you're well, I, I, an unlawful elector. Well, no, 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 no. In this indictment, what they have done in the indictment, it's not necessary for... If they want to, if they want to, and we think it should be stricken, we think the count should be dismissed. We know that based upon the case law that we've cited. But in closing arguments, Lord forbid we ever get to closing arguments, hope we don't, but if we did... And they stood up and they said, well, we think that they were fake. We think the evidence shows that they were fake electors. That's one thing. That's argument. That's advocacy. There's no place for it in the indictment. And there's no place for it in what they have done, not only in the indictment, but in their pleadings and statements they've made outside to the media. What they have tried to do is they want to have ingrained in the minds of the community and of jurors a concept that... If you were not a Democratic uh, elector uh, on December the 14th, casting your vote at, the other, at some other part of the, of the state capitol, then you are a fake elector. And that is a pejorative term, not necessary for the charges, and should be stricken. That's the point that we're trying to make. Um, and as it relates to our other arguments concerning uh, the the uh, dismissal of those counts. I don't think I need to go back over most of my argument or our argument on that really deals with the Electoral Count Act. So I don't think I need to revisit that in case the court <laughs> will get there. <laughs> really, really wants to hear that again. I don't I don't think you do. But uh, absent that, Your Honor, we think, number one, that the that the count should be dismissed the reasons uh, articulated earlier and in our pleading, and number two, that even if the counts are dismissed, in addition to that, references throughout the indictment to fake electors should be stricken as well. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Yellen.